Can you tell me a little bit about the work that FCR does? We are an agency that serves survivors of trauma and violence in the community with a primary focus on domestic violence, but our mission has expanded to include other types of trauma, um, including bereavement, um, drug addiction, and we have been doing this work for over 50 years here in the Brockton community throughout and throughout southeastern Massachusetts. And this is a beautiful mural. Can you tell me how this project came about? Sure, Rochelle can talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, following all the events of um, racial inequality last year, our staff had a lot of emotion and feeling about that. Um, we wanted to find a way for everybody to sort of get together with a common goal uh, to continue those conversations. Um, so we had the idea of doing a mural project um, and we were able to connect with um, the artists from 24 Hour Power, um, Susie Lordy and Rowdy Recluse, who sort of helped bring our vision um, to light in this beautiful mural. Um, we also did um, a focus group with our staff of color to sort of take a look like a lot of other employers um, at where we could improve within our agency um, around areas um, surrounding equality um, and diversity. Um, so based off of the input of our staff, we developed a in diversity and inclusion committee um, and we've worked towards things like revising our mission statement, coming up with a vision and value statement, as well as um, sort of reworking the way we recruit, hire, um, and retain staff of color. Um, so next steps for the diversity committee, uh, we'll be doing a, a community serve day in October where um, the employees will participate in sort of giving back to other agencies around the community. And how is FCR working to be the best representative of the community that they serve? I think just by um, improving the diversity and inclusion within ourselves um, so we can better relate to the staff and to, sorry to the clients that we serve uh, in the community. So having more staff of color and different ethnic backgrounds um, so that they can form that bond and connection with the clients. So what additional programs would you guys like to talk about? FCR has a wide variety of programs. We do mental health counseling. We have our domestic violence advocacy program. We also have two different types of visitation programs. One is for children who are in the Department of Children and Families state custody. So the children can come to our visitation center to see their parents. So we transport them from their foster homes or placements to our visitation center so that the families can be together to maintain that bond and that connection, which is so important. We also have a court ordered visitation program for um, families who are experiencing some issues around their separation and they have children. So it's a place for the non-custodial parent to come to see their child. Okay. So it's a safe environment. We also have an intimate partner abuse education program, um, which is a Department of Public Health funded program. Um, domestic violence offenders are usually required to take a 42 week education program as part of their probation usually. So our agency serves both sides of the equation. We serve the survivors and we serve the perpetrators. So so that we we address the whole problem, not just pieces of it. Now if someone were wanting to get involved with this, to be involved with the agency or with your organization, how would they go about doing that? We have a lot of volunteer opportunities. Um, if someone is interested, they can just go onto our website and um, they'll find the volunteer application where they can see all of the areas and you know let us know what they'd be interested in doing. Um, we certainly need help. You know, this October coming up for our event, we'd love to have some event volunteers. Um, but we are also looking for other volunteers. We're looking for um, someone who might be able to help us with marketing and fundraising um, and public relations because all of that helps to make all of our services possible. Thank you. Any other information we should know about?
Well, we have a walk for survivor safety coming up in October. It's on October 2nd at DW Field Park in Brockton. Um, it promises to be an uplifting, informative, um, and important day to raise awareness for survivors of domestic violence, especially in light of the recent tragedy um, with the death of Alicia Haywood. It's so important that we come together as a community to help end the menace that is domestic violence. So if anybody is interested, like you guys, in coming, October 2nd, we'll be there from 10 to 2. Awesome. Thank you. Another very important program um, is our transitional housing program for survivors. Uh, in the last year, during the pandemic, we housed 26 families um, in emergency housing placements, and then we permanently housed 24 additional families. So you can see that, you know, the need for um, services for survivors. We had one young mother that we helped who showed up on our back door with her baby and needed emergency assistance. And we were able to find her a temporary place to stay. And our um, coordinator, our housing coordinator, was able to work with her to find permanent housing. And it's not an easy process. Um, there are a lot of steps involved in, in making that happen. Thank you.